I would, I would, I would, I don't know, I don't, I mean, I would, I would, but when it comes down to actually giving life to a baby, some people just cannot handle it. Well, life has already been given, that's the point. The life yeah. has already been given. Well, I mean, now, whether or not we, people, but... the baby's going to come out either way. Mm -hmm. Either come out in pieces because we killed that child, mm -hmm. or alive. Okay. And yeah. God's word says that we shall not murder. Yeah, he also tells, he also tells but would you rather a female bring a baby into this world not knowing how to care for him, not knowing how to provide for That's why we're offering child? help. We let me finish, though. Sure, let go me, ahead. Let me finish, though. Like, offering life to a child, being able to take care of the child, how do you know that person is physically ready for that? Dobby. That's why we offer help. That's what we're saying. Any need you have, we, we, we ourselves, mm -hmm. personally, I've had dozens of women live in my own home with my family. Mm -hmm. We help them along. Other people on the street, we'll take them in, we'll help them, we'll disciple them, we'll train them. But That's even, not the issue. The uh -huh. issue is doing what is right, and then let's work on something. But let's not kill the child. Understood, but you, like I said, you never know how, how you know people, their body is able to carry a child. Well, they're pregnant. So they can get pregnant. I mean, no, I know, no, no, no. I know you can you can get pregnant, but I'm saying actually you carry the child for the whole nine months. Do you know what it feels like to carry a child for nine months? Well, I have 13 children, so I've you been have a around. Lot of kids. <laughs> huh? I see you have a lot of kids. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're wonderful. But the point is, if there are any women who are in a situation where they can't care a child, I haven't encountered them out here. I've, I've talked to thousands of women. I've been out here for like 30 years. Understood, but you can't tell a female that she can or can't have a child. Sure she can. is or isn't ready. You can't. Sure can. I do it every female, day. So it's wrong understand. to kill a child, not to have a child. Mm -hmm. But once you have sex and you have created that child, mm -hmm. it is up to you to protect that child. And if you yeah. choose to not go through with the child, then that's just your point. That's your it's point. too late. You've already yeah. not created the child. Now it's you up to us to obey God. You and stuff like that. Yeah, understood. But the baby is not actually born. What makes you think that? What do you mean, what makes you think that? I've, at, at <laughs> I've eight, had a child. Okay, 18 days uh -huh. after conception. Before a woman even knows she's pregnant, the child is a beating heart. Yes. You get by four, five weeks, measurable brain waves. Brain fully functioning, heartbeat, circul circulatory how system. Over here over so, so how can we say it's not fully formed? A woman who's 80 years old looks different from a child who's six months old. Mm -hmm. It's all along the progression of human development. But all of a sudden to say, okay, but because of this child, I don't want it. It's less human. It doesn't make any sense. God's word says it is human. Mm -hmm. And God's word tells all of us we shall not murder. It's a person. And God tells his people to go into all the world. Mm -hmm preach the gospel and teach them whatsoever I've told you to tell them, you know, whatever his teachings are. Mm -hmm. His teachings are that we shall not murder. It is up to us as people to tell someone else not to kill their child. For one thing, for that child's sake, but also that woman's going to stand before God and to answer for taking the life of her child. And we would want to spare her of that blood guiltiness. Yeah. How you know these people in here believe in God? It doesn't okay. matter. God what? believes in them. But how you know they believe in God? What difference? Y'all might believe in him. What difference does it make if God's word? If I don't believe He exists, He still exists. No, I'm just, I'm just saying, like based off, of, you know, what you're talking about right well, now. Well, a lot of people might not think He exists, but that's neither here nor there. He does, and He still gives them commandments to do what is right. But I'm saying, if they don't believe in God, you know, how you saying, like, you know, it's God's word to not kill children and stuff like that. But how do you know they go off of it? But I just, I like, I'm like, I'm saying, I don't, I don't condone nobody like killing kids and stuff like that. But I personally feel like you shouldn't bring a child into this world if you're not ready, because that is that. The, it's not just about raising the child; it's what about the mother also has to go through too. Well, once again, once you have the child, there's also there's hundreds of thousands, literally, people waiting to adopt a child right now, infants, newborns. But also, so, I, I'm sorry, I wouldn't want to go through a whole pregnancy knowing that I'm not ready. I actually don't want this child, right. and then I have to go through the whole pregnancy and then just... Well, that's you know. good. That's I've heard a good that many thing. times. I've heard that yeah, many times. Yeah, but that's a good people. thing for you to say that that is good, but that's not what's happening. Mm -hmm. Reality is people are coming here today to have their babies killed. That's a reality. That's happening today. Mm. But do you, uh, like, like I said, do you know people's backstory? On, do you know why? Some no, but the story is they're having, whatever it is, they're having the baby their child... That they got from somebody who them but you know, like we don't that. know their backstory. You're right about that. Right. That's why we show compassion. We offer help. That's right. But we do know that that child is going to die. That's right. And that child should not die because of a mother's backstory or a father's backstory. That child should be protected. And let's make the best of the situation the mom's in. Right. By cutting a child's head off, it doesn't take the rape away. That crime's been committed. What, right. what killing a baby does is then makes that mama just as bad as a rapist because now she's a murderer. Mm -hmm. 
So how does that solve the situation? Either I way, wouldn't want to keep my baby if I, if I if my baby came in like that. I know I many would. children that are born out of rape, and mm -hmm. women they live with us, and the mothers who were raped mm -hmm. and lived with us when we had a maternity home. Not one of them ever regretted giving birth to that baby because they were violated. They chose not to violate their child. True. Right. True. Maybe. I even thought about abortion when I um, when I had when I was pregnant because I wasn't ready. I was I was seventeen. Sure I wasn't did. ready to take care of a baby. That's I don't have my own car. Still to this day, I don't have my own car. I don't have my own place. I had really really bad postpartum. Even though I had I had you know I had a little bit of support around me and stuff like that, but it's not really. You know, I couldn't really explain to y'all how I actually how it actually made me feel during, after, and before the pregnancy. Sure. So, like I said, it also takes a toll on the woman's body and, and, and everything. Like like I said, I had really bad postpartum and all this and all that, but the reason why I decided to keep my baby is because everybody kept telling me that I couldn't. And I actually loved my baby. Mm -hmm. Like, when I went and got my first uh, ultrasound, that's when I got connected to my baby, and I did not decide to keep her. But right. sure. based off, you know, like I said, based on the people that's coming in here, you never know their backstory, but like I said, I, I don't, I don't condone the, you know, killing kids and stuff like that. But like I said, you don't know. What you well, we don't. People, people just probably just not ready. Well, that's he, a big step in life. That is a big yeah, step. Yeah, we understand that, but that doesn't negate the fact that you don't murder a child. Mm -hmm. We all have backstories. People some have, good, some about, bad. I'm sure they thought about adoption and all that, but it's just like you going through the whole pregnancy. You might as well keep the baby, but I'm not ready, and I know I can't take care of this child. Sure, that, well, that's an emotional thing someone's going to have to go through, but that still doesn't take away the fact that they should not murder that baby. We, what we're doing is we're talking about the mom, how she feels. What about that baby who's going to have their head crushed? You're right. You're right. That child's its own individual created in God's image and likeness, and God, in the strongest terms, says that he hates. He actually said in Proverbs 6, he hates the hands that shed innocent blood. What's Not that God's that a little bit hand? upset, God's huh? The paper. the paper that you were trying to hand me, I want to take the paper. Yeah, sure. I'm going to toss it to you. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I can't just... No, you're fine. You're you fine. Yeah, you know... It's not that God's a little upset and says, uh, you know, it's a bad thing, but let's get over it. God will hold all the people accountable. Mm -hmm. It says it's appointed to every man and woman wants to die. We're all going to die. Just as sure as that death, there's the judgment. Plus, it's after that, the judgment. And he's already given us his law by mm -hmm. which we'll be judged. No one's going to be surprised. When he says we shall not murder, we can't say, yeah, but God, you don't know my backstory. Mm -hmm. We shall not murder. We could be violated, but we still don't murder. I could be in poverty, but I still don't murder. I could have depression, but I still don't murder. Everybody's That's what God's different. word says. Everybody's different. Some They're may, all different, maybe. but they all will stand before the same God with mm -hmm. the same commands and the same judgment. But I'm saying, you know how you, you, know, you say that we you know, stand before God and all this, but what if they don't think that? They're still going to stand before God. But yeah. what if they don't believe in God? Like, oh, oh okay. But blah, see, that blah, doesn't blah, change blah. the reality. I could right now believe that you're a tree I'm talking to. You're not. You're a woman. My belief isn't going to change the fact that God has said it and it's going to happen. We will tell them about God. We will hopefully lead them to Him so they can find forgiveness and experience His grace. Mm -hmm. But if they never do, they're going to stand naked and trembling just like all of us who believe in God before that holy God. Our belief doesn't change God. But maybe, and what if some of these females in here are like young? Like, first, like, I, I personally feel like should no young female be having sex anyway. Sure. But... How do you feel if, let's say, a 13-year-old is in here pregnant? What, what can a 13-year-old do with a baby right now? Right, and that's a terrible situation to be in. Mm -hmm. One thing, it's a failure on the parents' part, so they're letting their children live that yeah. kind of lifestyle. Yeah. But if she's 13, her child's younger, her child also is precious. We can. I had women, girls as young as 14 and 15, live with us. We, we house girls. Mm -hmm. Once again, none of them ever rejected or, or regretted given their baby life. And the ones we had, they actually did choose adoption. Mm -hmm. And they're living wonderful lives now. So is the baby. Because mm -hmm. having gotten pregnant, that's happened. That's not going to go away. She's going to be pregnant. It's not going away. That baby's going to come out. That's not going to go away. It comes down to, when that baby comes out, is she going to be guilty of murdering that child? Mm -hmm. Or is she going to be one that says, bad situation, but I love my baby enough to give it life? You're right. And that's, 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 that's kind of what made me change my mind too. Like I said, like, you know, she innocent. You know, she don't have nothing. You know, she don't know. Sure, that's right. That, and I already said that is true. So what I what I'm saying is, I'm not saying that you all are wrong out here. Y'all that y'all you know y'all doing what y'all believe or whatever the case is. But you know, like I said, sometimes you got to think about how the mothers feel too. And we do. We're the ones. We're the ones who have to have to raise the child. You yep. know, not but, even just like I said. What yeah. you said, you said adoption. You can get help, but 
how do you think that might make me feel the wrong? Like, well, I just carried my baby for nine months and I just gave away, even though I couldn't like, dang. But okay. But you know what? There's also so many women with the same thought after they've killed their baby. Mm-hmm. They live the rest of life with that guilt also. True. You know, that is very I could true. Have, I could have let my baby live. And actually, even though it's bittersweet, I know I gave my baby life. The other woman has to live with the guilt. You know what? I was in a situation. I had someone suck the arms and legs off my butt baby. And for the rest of the life, they've lived with that guilt. And that's a heavy burden to bear, and a lot of women suffer from that. But I will tell you something about our motivation, <clears throat> as far as not knowing the women's backstory. <clears throat> I have to get up at 5, 4.30 in the morning to be here in time to speak, speak to people. Mm-hmm. I've been coming out here since they opened, and here in Richmond for nearly 30 years. Mm-hmm. If I didn't care about the women, do you think I'd get out of bed in the morning? No, I don't. And also, when I'm speaking, I'm not speaking to babies. I'm speaking to the moms. If I can't reach the moms and offer help to that mom, that baby's not going to live. Our outreach is toward the moms because we do love the moms. Yeah. Hello. Good morning. Give me, give me like five minutes. Can I come over? Could I ask you a question too? Yes. Why are you here? My a friend of mine is in there. She had a appointment. Would you be willing to put literature into her hands? And let her know we're here for it. any need she has. She's, she's not gonna come out. She she has a kid. She has a kid. She has two. Yeah, yeah, she had two. But she's not like I said. She's not worried about it. Her baby is still a baby. But you know, so many women tell me that, mm-hmm. and once they really realize legitimate people are here, really right now to offer that practical help, they change their mind because they. A lot of women feel like, what else can I do? Mm-hmm. You know, I'm being pressured into this. I, my situation such where I, I got to do this. Until someone says, no, here I'm right now. Let's go. Let's go. Let's do something better. We'll help you. And then we've seen so many women change their minds. Mm-hmm. Not many people wake up in the morning and say, you know what? Let's go kill a baby today. That seems like a good thing to do. Yeah. You know, it's not a good, easy decision. Yeah. And often people feel alone, like they have to do it. But we're, we're here legitimately to offer help. Sometimes, you know, sometimes trying to break that down to somebody else. Like, okay, so like I said, I was 17, no car, no house. My um, my baby daddy or whatever the case is, we we won't never together. It it happened off what happened. You get yeah. what I'm saying? So I felt like at first I'm like, I didn't I didn't want any kids at, at an early age. Anyways, sure. I wanted to wait till I had a car, a place, and stable support because now still I struggle to get a babysitter sometimes, and that takes a toll on you. That's sure. another reason why I was going through the depression because I felt like nobody wanted to be here for me and wanted to help me with my child. Not even sure. just you know me, but I felt like nobody you know didn't want to be around and help me. I didn't have support like that. Um, it's hard for me to save. And it's like, when you have a baby, you got to mature right in the middle. Like, you have to mature right in the middle. Some sure. people, don't, people don't do that because you're going to become a mother. You have, you have to raise this child. You have to do everything. This is, the, this is who you are, who your child depends on. So, like I said, so when it comes down to the abortion sometimes, maybe that's another, that's another reason right there. Because all, all those reasons right there, babe, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. You know, you have to, like I said, you literally have to mature right in the there when you find out because you got to go hard. You got to do what you got to do. Yeah, you know, I want to bring something else into that, too. Mm-hmm. And, it, and it doesn't change the situation with your pregnancy or, or my past things I've done. <clears throat> the problem we find ourselves in, all, the reason we find ourselves in all these problems mm-hmm. um, is because we don't honor God and obey Him. Mm-hmm. You know, the Bible says that we shall not commit adultery or not to commit fornication, which is sex not being married mm-hmm. with, with a husband who will provide. Yeah. If we just honored God, the reason we mess up is because we we know God's law. We know that it works. Mm-hmm. We're like, not. Nah, I'd rather do it my way. Yeah. And so much tragedy comes about. Babies being killed, moms struggling with children without a husband. Mm-hmm. If we only lived our lives to honor God, we wouldn't. all these problems would be solved. Mm-hmm. People wouldn't be raping. Women wouldn't be aborting. They wouldn't be alone. If we just honor God, you have and he gives, he gives us his commands, and also he gives us the grace to honor him and love him. Mm-hmm. And if we submit to him and trust him, he's faithful 100% of the time to give us the strength to do what we should. I've known him now for over 30 years, I was 35 years. I was 17 when I became a Christian. God is faithful all the time. But we always try to make it our own way mm-hmm. and screw things up. You know? okay. And when we try to solve a problem... Uh-huh. By compounding it, by killing a baby, never solves the problem. We compound guilt upon guilt, sin upon sin, 
And then we have to answer to God for this stuff when he's offering help mm. out of a situation that we messed up. And with these girls here, no matter their backstory, there's help available. <laughs> Wherever they're coming from, we can help them where they're at. And actually, like I was saying, like y'all not out here like saying nothing wrong, but what about how some of the things like, like what about some of the things y'all say over the microphone, how y'all think it make them feel, even though they know they ready to go in here and get an abortion, but it's like the other person like, oh, you're ready to kill your baby, you're you're doing this, that, or that. like we like we know, but it's just like dang y'all ain't dang gotta do me like that. You know, like, yeah, we don't, like, we we don't, don't want people to... to point out our faults and whatever. That's uh -huh. true. But God does it to us all the time. Yeah. You know, when he does. says I shouldn't be selfish and I shouldn't be lusting, let's see if I'm living a lustful life, a selfish life. Mm -hmm. I don't want to hear it. The Bible talks about we don't, when, we, when God speaks his word to us, those who hate God, it says, they don't want the light. They run from the light. They run away from it. But God exposes our sins. He wants us to know them. And a girl who is feeling guilty because she's about ready to kill her baby, mm -hmm. that's God giving guilt. Yeah, that's God telling we you don't, We don't want to feel it. Mm -hmm. God wants us to feel it heavy because that's what causes us to turn around and do what's right. Yeah. That's God speaking to us. Because me just calling out, no one knows me, it's not going to bother them. Like, who's that fool? Mm -hmm. But God speaks to them and says, that's true, that's right, and they feel the guilt. But what about, like, I, like I said, I, I hate to make it about just solely about the mother all this and all that, but it's like... If you're not ready, that you when you have kids, you gotta be ready. Like you got, there's no, no That's how it should be. And if you right. feel like you have to question it, then you know that you're not ready. What, like I said, no car, no house. What if you get kicked out because your your parents wanted you to get that abortion so bad? They kick you out. Now you living on the street with your kids. Well, you know, perhaps, or you'd have someone like me say, "Hey, come live with us." You right. Right. And we have lists of people who will do that. But what and, if we and the don't times, trust? The, the time to think, right. There's always, all, once again, it goes back to us not honoring God and not living in fellowship with other believers who will mm -hmm. help us out. But the time to worry about that really is before we go to bed. Once mm -hmm. we cause the problem, the woman's pregnant, the guy's gotten the girl pregnant, we've already started down the road to, am I going to love this child, provide this child, or kill this child? If we don't go that far, we're not going to have to deal with that. We honor God and live pure lives. But that's something. But that's we can't. Something that but we you can't say that. For yourself, though, you can't let. Like I already said, I can't say you can't let what people say affect on what you're gonna do with your baby. Because with my mom, if my, with my how my mom and my stepdad was, they like, oh, you're not gonna have this baby. They tried to set the appointment for me and everything. That's what made. That's what kind of made me mad because they're like, oh, you're gonna get this abortion. They didn't. Have, they didn't give me no time to talk. Sure. They didn't care how I felt about it. But they. Didn't, but now, of course, they love my. You know, they. They sure. love us no and doubt. all. And of course now, but. They won't try to give me a, a, a chance to say my sad. Like I said at first, I didn't want to keep my baby. When I first when I first found out I was pregnant, I'm like, no, like there's no way because I'm not ready. Don't have no car, no criminal with him, none of that. So I'm right. like, I don't have no money in my savings, none of that. So I'm like, I'm, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. May, may like, I say, mm -hmm. you have a wonderful testimony of how you loved your child. Mm -hmm, thank right. you. And if you could tell that to some of these other ladies, you could be much more of an influence than we could ever be. You could take your situation and use it for so much good. Just like that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to do this for the good of these ladies and these children. Sad, so I, I, I thank you for sad. what your decision was that you kept your child. It's so refreshing to hear what you did. And I'm just, it just has made me think about how wonderful it is that your decision was to have your child. Thank you. So I would just encourage you to use that experience to help other people. I, I, was, I do though, like, I know when she first told me, of course, when Good. she first told me what was going on, I'm like, whoa, like, the first the first thing I thought of, like, yo, like, you know, you just, you also just had a kid, like, you, right. you sure? Like, well, continue to be a good, in, uh, good input to, to that, yes. Well, my name is Denny, by the way. Denny? We're talking, yeah, Denny. And you are? Jesse. Denny and... Jesse. Jesse. Yeah. I'm Ayana. Mayana? Ayana. Ayana. Nice. Say it again. Ayana. 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 Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, well, it was nice talking to you. Like, okay. I, too. I don't feel like y'all out here saying nothing wrong, and I appreciate what y'all actually out here trying to do, but you also got to understand people's situations. Okay. We, we, trust me, we do. We'll try, we'll try to do this that. is the business yeah. we're in to understand the situations. We, we try to do that. But also not losing track of that, uh, losing sight that there's a baby involved, You're right. not just a mom situation. And when we have a bad situation, we can't make it better by killing the baby. They won't. Because even if we think it's making it better, mm -hmm. we're separating ourselves from God, and God's judgment comes upon us. And we have to answer to that 
you know, to God for that. And nothing can be better by compounding or, or, or putting more separation between us and God and more sin. You know, bad situations need to be made better, mm-hmm. and it can't be by killing a baby. That needs to be off the table. And then let's work on making the situation better. If you can get that literature to your friend, please do. Yeah. If you don't, share it with her when she comes out. There's there's numbers on there to help women too after they've done this. Okay. Because there's guilt. Do y'all have like I always say, is it numbers on here that because like I said, I went through real bad postpartum, but sometimes I still feel like I need a, a therapist or something. Right. Like that. Is it, is it the type the, of the, um, the crisis pregnancy center number on there. Okay. Um, on the back. Okay. Would probably be able to do that. They work with women before and after pregnancy. Right. And they have lists of you know resources. I'd be calling them though because I do feel like I need to talk to somebody. Yeah, they love to talk to you. They that's what they're for. Okay. Yeah. And, and we, we care about you. We wouldn't be here otherwise. Huh? They, they have offices. Actually, Willow Lawn in Richmond. Okay. Yeah, they, I'm, I'm right there. Back. Yeah. And there's also one in the East End. If you call the number, they will direct you to the closest. Okay. Tri Cities, the East End, um, Willow Lawn. They're all around. Okay. Everything they do is free. Okay. Well. Like I said, it was nice talking to you. Yes. Y'all have a good day. All All right. right. Bless you. You take care.